and uh, welcome to the next lecture part which introduces and motivates hyperparameter tuning. So in this lecture part we are now going to deal with the uh, problem of how to set all of these tedious extra parameters that we have encountered a couple of times now when we um, describe several machine learning algorithms especially um, non-parametric and more powerful ones. So let's um, look at a motivating example here. So assume we are giving a certain data set and we want to train a classification tree for example and we feel that a maximum depth of four has worked well for us uh, previously in the past. Maybe this is also the default setting um, of the tree depth in our uh, favorite um, tree learning library. So we decide not to bother with this setting and just leave it at its default value. So yeah, we don't have to deal with this problem. And now we use our inducing machine learning algorithm, which we here denote with this letter capital I and this um, yeah, inducing algorithm as a mathematical function takes um, a piece of input data usually of size n. It trains on this data usually by performing empirical risk minimization and then returns a fitted tree model with a tree which has a depth of um, at most four levels, yeah? which minimizes our empirical risk on this given training data set and then outputs our model so we can apply this to new data. Now, in order for us to kind of um, check whether um, our modeling with the tree on this specific um, data situation was successful, we are actually interested in checking the generalization performance of this model, yeah? which we formally denote here with this GE of F hat. Um, so algorithmically, we are now um, trying to, or we are now computing the uh, predicted uh, model performance on new previously unseen data. Yeah? And we usually do this by this training test principle, where we uh, assume that we have some untouched um, test data available, yeah? denoted here with this dtest, and then we iterate over this test data, push this test data into our already trained model f hat, um, take all of the resulting predictions, compare them to the true labels of all of the observations in the test data, measure the discre discrepancy between f hat, f hat of x and uh, the true label y through a loss function, and then average all of these um, yeah, loss numbers. Okay, and maybe this um, works quite well, maybe um, this works somewhat suboptimally, and the reason that um, this generalization error might actually be a bit worse than what we were hoping for when we were training the model um, is that some of our machine learning algorithms are actually quite sensitive um, with respect to good settings of their hyperparameters. Yeah? And generalization performance can actually suffer a lot if we have not chosen a optimal or suitable um, hyperparameter configuration. So for the tree, um, the data might actually be too complex um, to be modeled by a um, tree of death four. Uh, so maybe we are actually underfitting with such a smallish tree, or actually the data might be much simpler than we thought and we're already overfitting with a tree of death four. So for a uh, car tree, this is a somewhat uh, contrived, constructed example here. Um, this problem might not be expressed too strongly for a decision tree, but especially for more complex models, more powerful uh, nonlinear machine learning models like support vector machines or um, deep neural networks. Um, you know, this um, can actually be a very, very real problem. And of course now, um, yeah, it's kind of obvious um, what we could do to repair this problem if our generalization error is not as good as we are um, hoping it to be. So we can just try out you now different uh, configurations, different uh, lambda values here, and then check um, generalization performance again and again. And uh, hyperparameter tuning tries to automate this uh, process in algorithmic fashion, tries to reduce this problem of 
finding the optimal hyperparameter configuration to a search or optimization problem. Yeah? So we again and again train um, modules to completion with different uh, hyperparameter configurations, lambda, or we cross-validate models with different hyperparameter configurations, lambda, and then at the end, choose, choose the configuration that is optimal with respect to the uh, generalization error of our inducing algorithm. Um, a couple of comments on uh, model parameters versus hyperparameters, so that's um, kind of a very critical distinction, so I want to make this here very, very clear. So model parameters, we already know them, we have always denoted them before with this um, letter theta here, and model parameters are actually optimized during the training process of a machine learning model, usually through something like empirical risk minimization, and they are the major output of the training process um, of machine learning. And examples are for uh, the split positions, um, the split features and the split positions and the terminal node constants, for example, for a tree learner, the coefficients of a linear model, the coefficient vector of a logistic regression model, and so on. Hyperparameters, in contrast to normal model parameters, are not decided during training. Instead, they are actually an input to the training algorithm. And this is why they are so bothersome for us. So if we don't kind of add some extra algorithmic components to our machine learning model to automatically tune them, we as a user have to decide these hyperparameters. And this is often quite um, complicated um, because we are um, often lacking reliable and um, precise information how to set them for specific data situations. Um, hyperparameters often control the complexity of a model. Um, so usually um, every powerful um, nonlinear machine learning model has at least one parameter that um, controls its, um, yeah, its complexity, its capacity. Um, usually these parameters are associated with a, a principle that's called regularization. Um, but in principle, um, these hyperparameters can influence any kind of structural property of a model or any computational aspect of the training process. So it's, it's any setting um, which is not um, clear a priori that defines how our training procedure is actually being run. And examples are um, the maximum death of a tree. Uh, I've used that in my motivating example, the K, for um, yeah, the number of uh, nearest neighbors in our K and N method, actually with which distance measure to use, uh, Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, um, the number and maximal order of interactions to be included in linear regression or logistic regression model and so on. And for many of these uh, parameters, we have um, not discussed yet how to choose them in an optimal manner, but at least we have shown to you um, what the effect of these hyperparameters is on the resulting decision surface and sometimes also on the resulting um, yeah, generalization um, error or generalization performance of the model. Um, there's a couple of different technical types of hyperparameters. Um, these are important to note uh, when we later talk about uh, different um, algorithms for searching over hyperparameter spaces because um, some of these uh, search algorithms can only deal with um, specific types or scales of hyperparameters. So first there are um, the usual real valued parameters. So for example, the minimum error improvement in a tree to accept the split or um, maybe the bandwidth of a kernel density estimator if we use a KDE to estimate uh, densities in naive base. Then there's also integer parameters, and we've seen uh, quite a few of these. Again, um, the K neighborhood size for a K and N model, the M tri parameter in a random forest, which defines how many um, features we randomly sample when we search for an optimal split in a tree of a random forest. And then there's also categorical parameters, which split criterion to use for a classification tree, which distance measure to use for K and N. Um, unfortunately, there's also sometimes um, 
so-called hierarchically dependent parameters. Sometimes they're also called subordinate parameters. So these are parameters that actually depends on the setting of a specific other parameter. So an example here would be only if we use a kernel density estimate, there is an active parameter um, with uh, for the uh, KDE um, algorithm. And only if this uh, kernel density estimate setting would be true, this parameter is actually active and makes sense. And um, this means that the space of our hyperparameter tuning problem is um, potentially of a very, very mixed structure uh, containing these real valued integer and categorical parameters, but also of a hierarchical structure. And that makes it quite um, complicated to handle with uh, normal popular optimization algorithms.